Jai Sai Ram to all my viewers. This video is all about how to draw ray diagrams using lenses. So there are certain rules for obtaining images formed by convex lenses. We have already discussed how to draw ray diagrams with the mirrors and even there is a basic video to how to draw the setup as drawing the convex and concave lens absolutely of Correct radii is very important to get the exact measurements. So I've shared the link in the description box how to make this basic setup for the convex lens ray diagram and concave lens ray diagram. You can just watch and continue the ray diagrams from now. Okay, so the very first rules which we have already discussed in the case of mirror is just the same. That is, if we we'll suppose that a ray of light is coming parallel to the principal axis. I hope you all know that this line is termed as the principal axis. And if a ray of light is coming and striking this lines in our lens, that is convex lens, it will bend and pass from the focus. So as you could see, it is passing through the focus. So this is our first rule, rule one, that if a ray of light is passing parallel to the principal axis, it will pass through the focus, that is F2. A second rule states that if we could watch carefully, if a ray of light is passing through the optical center, it goes straight, undeviated. Undeviated means without bending, without showing any refraction. Because lenses follow the phenomena of refraction. And a second, uh, sorry, and a third rule says like, that if a ray of light is passing from the focus, if a ray of light is coming and passing from the focus. After refraction, it will become parallel to the principal axis. So these are the three rules used for making the ray diagrams of the lenses. We we'll revise again, parallel to the principal axis, passes through the focus. The ray of light goes straight through the optical center. Third, it passes through the focus and becomes parallel to the principal axis. So now moving ahead to the very first ray diagram in which we are considering our object at infinity. Infinity means we are unaware of the case where our object or where the rays are coming from. So in that particular case, we will draw the object outside the principal axis. So we have kept the object outside the principal axis. This is our principal axis because if we are keeping the object on the principal axis that really means that we know the distance and infinity means we are unaware of the distance where our object is. So the very first rule goes like when a ray of light is coming parallel to the principal axis we have already studied it will pass from the focus and again from the bottom as well, the same rule goes that if a ray of light is coming parallel to the principal axis, it will pass from the focus. These are the rules. And we know wherever the two rays meet, the image is formed. So the image is formed at F2 in this case. Now, if we write about the characteristics of the image, since the image is formed when the rays actually meet and when the rays actually meet the ray formed or the image formed is termed as real and inverted what is it termed as real and inverted it is very small so we'll write it as highly diminished and the third ray a third case is the position where the image is getting formed. So we could see it is forming at F2. So we'll write the image is forming at F2. So always we'll write these three points. First the nature, second the size and the third where is it getting formed. So this is the very first case of the ray diagram when object is at infinity. Moving ahead to the next one. Okay, the second case is we are keeping the object beyond 2F1. So the very first case, we kept the object at infinity. Now we will keep the object beyond 2F1 and one by one, we will bring the object closer to the lens. So in this case, when the object is beyond 2F1, I'm taking my object of 1.5 centimeter 
and naming the object as AB. The rule goes the same. The very first rule says that when the when a ray of light is parallel to the principal axis, it passes from the focus. The very first rule. When a ray of light is parallel to the principal axis, it passes from the focus. And the second rule says that we have to take from the top of the object and pass a straight line from optical center as there is no deviation when a ray of light passes from optical center. So the straight line. You could see both the rays are meeting over here at this point. So I'll draw the image over here. So my image will be like A dash B dash since it is forming inverted. So it was A or B over here and over here when the image is getting formed A came down. It's A dash B dash that means our image is real and inverted. So noting down the three characteristics of image the very first characteristic we know that we are getting a real and inverted image. So we write real and inverted. Second is where is it getting formed? So we know that it is getting formed between f2 and 2f2 of the lens. And the third is you can notice the size. It's a little bit smaller. And that's why I always measure the object while height of object. It was 1.5 when I took. And if you could notice, it's near about 1.1. Since it has reduced its size, we we'll write it as diminished. So these are the three characteristics and the ray diagram when object is beyond 2f. So the next case is when the object is at 2f. When the object is at 2f, same as we have done beyond 2f, the rules will be just the same. I'll be keeping the object at 2f of 1.5 cm, naming it as AB. And the first rule goes like, yes, it's parallel to the principal axis and will pass from the focus. See, the ray diagrams are very easy if you are clear with the rules once. Make sure you mark the arrows parallel to the principal axis passing from the second case is when the object is passing from the optical center. From the top, keeping it in mind. Yes. And when it is passing from the optical center, just a second. We'll get the ray. So we could notice the two rays are meeting over here at 2f and Hence, our image will be like A dash, B dash, the arrow pointing towards straight optical center. So the three characteristics which we could notice when the object is at center of curvature, sorry. So the three characteristics of the image when object is at 2f, 1 or at 2f is first we could observe a real and inverted image. So it's real and inverted. The second characteristic we will be noticing about the size and it is of the same size as that of the object. No changes in the size. And third, where is it getting formed? So it is getting formed at 2f2. That is the same distance from the optical center. So this ray diagram is very important because in numericals they directly ask in which case the object is equal to the image or the height of object is equal to height of image. So that is when the object is at 2f1. The next is the case when the object is between f1 and 2f1. Because as I told you, we will be bringing the object one by one closer to the lens. Infinity was the first case. Beyond 2f1, the next one. 2f1 was the third one. And now is the fourth. That is when the object is between f1 and 2f1. We'll keep the size same. That is 1.5 centimeter. We'll name the object as A, B, and then it goes like, yes, parallel to the principal axis and it will pass through the focus. So the rays will go like this, parallel to the principal axis, passes from the focus. And the second is, it is passing straight through the optical center. So when I produce both the image, both the rays, I could see they are meeting at this point. And when they're meeting at this point, I'll join and name my image as A dash, B dash. Make sure you mark the arrows for the ray diagram where the rays are passing. 
So the three characteristics are we could notice that the nature of the image it is again real and inverted. So we write real and inverted. The next characteristic is the size if you could notice it is increased. So we will write it as magnified and the third is where the image is getting formed we could see it is getting formed beyond 2f2. So this is how the ray diagram is formed when the object is between f1 and 2f1. The next is the situation when object will be at f1 keeping the object at f1 naming the object it as a b we'll move ahead with the same rule that is yes parallel to the principal axis it will pass through the focus and the second rule is like it goes straight from the optical center marking the arrows parallel to the principal axis passes through the focus straight to the optical center we could easily notice that the rays are getting parallel and the image won't be formed in this case because it will be highly enlarged. We don't know where the rays will actually meet. So the three characteristics goes like real and inverted since it is forming on the other side of the lens and the nature comes like real and inverted. Coming up on the size, since the rays are not meeting, we will write it as highly enlarged. Sorry, not diminished. It's highly enlarged. That the rays are not meeting we do not know where the object will be image will be formed and third where is the image formed we do not know that is at infinity so these are the three characteristics of the image when object is at f1 the last case of the ray diagram in the case of convex lenses is when our object is between optical center and f1 So keeping the object somewhere between optical center and F1, I have named the object as A, B and the rule goes like same. First, it's parallel to the principal axis. It will pass from the focus. And the second, it is going straight through the optical center. So these are the two rules which we have used in each and every ray diagram. Since we could see if I'll produce the rays beyond, there is no scope for them to meet. But if I will produce them backwards, there are some chances for the image getting formed. So the backward rays are always produced with the dotted line and I am doing the same. So producing the rays backward, I could see they are meeting up at a one point and this is the point. So wherever it is formed, the rays are meeting, I have named it as A dash and B dash. This is my image in this case when the object is between optical center and F1. So writing down the characteristics of image for this particular one, you could notice since the rays appear to meet and actually do not meet, we write the nature as virtual and direct. The second characteristic is about the size. We could easily observe that the size is getting increased and so it is magnified. Moving ahead to the third one, that where it is getting formed, it is getting formed behind the object. That would be just the enough specifications. This ray diagram is again very important because usually uh, it is related to the numericals with the concept that object and image are on the same side. And in which case of the convex lens, we get a virtual image. So this is the particular ray diagram for it and it's highly important. So the very first case in the case of concave lens when the object is at infinity. Again, I hope you all remember that we have to keep the object beyond principal axis, not on the principal axis when the object is at infinity. Okay, now since the object is at infinity, the rule goes the same that the rays of light will come parallel to the principal axis. Okay, so this is my ray of light coming parallel to the principal axis. Now, it has to pass from the focus. But this is my concave lens and it is a diverging lens. It does not make the rays meet at a point. It makes the rays diverge. So keeping this concept in mind, it will make the rays diverge. I have to just make the ray pass in this somewhat manner. Diverging so that it is coming 
to the previous focus where I have to keep it like dotted lines. So the rule goes like this. A ray of light is coming parallel to the principal axis on refraction. It is passing from the focus. But since it is a diverging lens, I have to produce the ray back. There are no scope that the rays will meet up at the next focus on the right side of the lens. So the second ray will also follow the same rule that is it is the ray is coming parallel to the principal axis and since the ray is coming parallel to the principal axis from the last point it will pass from the focus yes since it has to pass from the focus okay I'll bring the rays dotted and like straight okay so since it's my diverging lens, the rays have gone diverged and when I produced back the rays, I could find that both the rays are meeting at F1 and that is the same side of the object. And secondly, when the rays just appear to meet and we have a dotted line and actually it doesn't meet, we call it as a virtual and erect image. So the very first characteristic, it is virtual and erect image. The second is the situation that the object is formed at F1 and the very third point which we have to keep it in mind it is point sized or highly diminished because we could not even see a little bit of length it's just a point. So this is the case the very first case of the object at infinity in case of concave lenses the image is point sized. So the very last case of the ray diagram of the lenses and that is the second ray diagram for the concave lens is the object can be anywhere between infinity and optical center. So infinity we consider something beyond the principal axis. So I'm taking my object somewhere here that is between infinity and the principal axis. I find this place as ideal beyond 2f. So it's AB since it's my object. The rule goes the same that the ray of light is coming parallel to the principal axis. And since it is my diverging lens, I have to make it produce in this particular manner, that the ray of light is coming parallel to the principal axis and it is passing through the focus. Okay. So how we'll draw the arrows? Do not draw the arrow this way backward. It's going parallel to the principal axis and this is the ray which is getting diverged and I'm producing back so that it passes from somewhere. And the second rule is like it goes straight from the optical center without any deviation. I have gone through this one and I could notice that my two rays are meeting up at this point. I'll just join name the image as A dash B dash. Okay. Again, the rays just appear to meet and actually do not meet. So I'll say it as virtual and erect. So my image is virtual and erect in this case. The second, it will be diminished. Yes, you could notice that the size has been reduced. So I'll say it as diminished. And the third, it is where it is formed. So yes, it is formed between optical center and focus, if you could notice. So I'll write it is formed between optical center and focus. So this is all about the last ray diagram when the object is between optical center and somewhere between infinity. You could notice how the image is getting formed. Uh, thank you for watching the entire video. I hope I have cleared your concern of how to draw the ray diagrams in the case of lenses. If you have any concern, you can just comment it in the chat box so that I could clear your doubts and I could further help you making different videos of your doubts. Thank you for giving your precious time. I have shared in the description box all the playlist of the light chapter for class 10th and it is very helpful with where I'll where you can see that how to draw the ray diagrams for the lenses mirrors how to do draw the basic setup there are the numericals for the refraction and numericals of mirror and lenses as well please do like and comment on the video